Most of the time, this feeder hangs there unoccupied. All summer, of course, the adult male and the female have visited. But by mid-August, with the scruffy-looking juveniles fledged, and the adult males not yet headed for Central America, sometimes it looks like a scene from Top Gun. And hey, by the way, take a gander at how long that hummingbird's tongue is. Both sexes and all ages of the ruby throat are born aerial combatants. They'll even get their kicks doing loop-de-loops with wasps, though it's not entirely certain which one is chasing the other. And they'll fight over a feeder that stands empty 90% of the time. This male favors a particular perch on an azalea bush 10 or 12 feet from the feeder. From there, he can chase other hummers away. Or he moves to the feeder itself, not eating, not even perching at a feeding station, just making sure everyone knows he's the head honcho which they do. The females in the newly fledged fight with each other, sure, but they're as likely to head for outer space as they are to try to run the male off that feeder. If he could be said to have rules, the main dictum would be one other hummingbird is allowed, maybe, while he's there. But his tolerance has limits. One other hummer only. Watch this part again in slow-mo and you'll see that the male turns a full circle so he can watch his opponent zip past. It's true that the females and juveniles won't attack the male, but neither are they intimidated enough by him to stay gone. So the male, dominant though he is, shares. Here he taps out a Morse code message. Eat fast. You're trying my patience. Whipper snapper. Sometimes the male moves to his other favored perch, a particular knot on a specific limb in the redbud tree 50 feet away. Just because he's out of the picture, though, doesn't mean that peace breaks out. This female and juvenile fidget like gunfighters, waiting to see who will draw first. Sooner or later, one of them draws. Once in a blue moon, another male might show up. But it's not to His Majesty's liking. Some of these rambunctious juveniles might be this male's offspring. For whatever good that does them at the feeder. Well, that's okay. Papa Redthroat will be gone by the end of the first week in September here in Missouri, leaving the others to fatten up for the trip without the old man's interference.